Hi, my name is Brian, and that over there is my van, Bertha. Today, I'm going to take you on a tour and go over some of the components I used in building it. So about a year ago, I graduated from the University of Utah. Um, I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do after college, but I did know that I traded my car for this van. When I got it, it was full of debris, dirt, rust, all the stuff. I gave it my best attempt at cleaning it out and making it into something that you could live in, something that you could travel in, something that you could take anywhere, get up and go. So today I wanted to go over some of the components used in the build. I wanted to talk about some of the difficulties I had when building this van and really just show you you know, a thing or two if you're building your own van or if you just want to see a van, then 100% um, you might enjoy this video. Let's do it. And if you're interested in any of the parts used, like the solar panels, the electric cooler, the safe, the pumps, all that business, a lot of it can be found in the description down below on Amazon. So on the ground there, that's my favorite thing about this build. I got it at a thrift store for $2. It's called the Tot Spot. It's absolutely fantastic. You can sit in it just about anywhere. It packs up to the size of a small baton and it really is just a wonderful thing. 10 out of 10 recommend a top spot. So I'm gonna break this video up into four parts. First, I'm gonna go over some of the hardware and the wood that was used to build the van. Second, I'm gonna go over the electrical system as well as the solar panels on top. Third, I'm gonna cover plumbing. And fourth, I'm gonna get into kind of the fun accessories that I added to the van to make it feel a lot more like my own and not anyone else's. Titles in my name, so it is mine. So you can see here, the majority of the van is built out of wood. This is all plywood from Home Depot, all on the walls, all up here. The bed frame is built with two by fours and some more plywood. And all of this was built with two by fours underneath and some more plywood. So basically a lot of two by fours and a lot of plywood. On the walls and ceiling, the plywood is about 3 16 of an inch thick. On the ground, there's about half an inch of plywood. Behind this plywood on the walls is some foam paneling for insulation. I think we got about two inches there. And on the ceiling, we have some more foam paneling. In addition to this foam paneling, where there are air gaps, I use some Reflectix to keep everything nice and warm or cold, whatever you wish. These handles were from Home Depot. They're awesome. They're just held together with magnets. These drawer slides, they were from Lowe's. They're awesome. They're soft closed, so you can slam it, you know, close slowly. Cabinets are hard to build, man. Getting those precisions with two by fours, it is tough. Just some basic hinges here, keeping everything together. And just a lot of pocket screws setting it in, getting the correct tolerances. The floors, they were cut with a jigsaw. They're kind of messy right now because I was just standing out in the dirt. The flooring was all from Home Depot. The bed is made to lift up so you can grab it, make it into a bench. And it does that on both sides. Let me take you around the back so we can see that. So in the back, you can kind of see a little more of the frame. It's all two by four in plywood. It does the same thing in the back where it kind of lifts up if you need to access underneath. On the doors, there's just plywood that I spray painted black. Super easy, super fast, and it looks good. This thing right here, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's a box, it's got storage inside, and it's awesome seating for when you gotta cook, eat, read, think. As you can see right here, some bugs made a nice little home while I had that fan open. We'll just reverse it and get them out of there. Up here, cut a square in the ceiling of the van, drop the fan in, kinda scary cutting it, but it's all good now. So that's the hardware of the van. Let's get into the electrical. Back here is where the van's electrical system lives. Um, I'll just point out, it looks a little messy, but quick, you got a battery, you got a solar charge controller, you have an inverter right here for AC power. That's the fuse box controlling everything. Don't worry about the wires, I like them like that. That big red thing, it's a kill switch, so you can turn all the electrics on or off if you have to for any reason. This is a Bluetooth receiver, so it's super easy to check the charge of the batteries from my phone. And that brings us up to the solar panels. If we follow these wires, these wires, boop, 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 boop. Up here, up here, up here, up here, here. Step up here. A lot of bugs over here. Lots of bugs. So up here, you can see the solar panels. There are two 100 watt flexible Renergy solar panels. They are a bit dirty right now, but they are keeping the batteries fully charged just about all the time, especially on sunny days like this. And you can see the wires, they go over there and enter the van through that little black thing in the corner over there. And here's the control panel for the electronics. So right here is the voltage. You can see that your batteries are always charged. Right here, you have some USB panels charging. A 12 volt marine outlet right over here. A light switch for one of the lights. A dimmer for the other light, so you can make your own mood lighting. And over here is a button that will turn on the inverter 
and now these outlets are ready to use for whatever appliances you need to use them for. And I actually finished the build of the van in a Home Depot parking lot just powering my power tools from this and the sun. So that was used for the jigsaw that cut the floor up, that was used to cut a few more pieces of wood up. So these things can really crank out some power, it's a 1500 watt inverter, yeah it'll keep you going, charging camera batteries, drone batteries, laptops, anything you need really. That all goes, I have these LED light strips up here that keep it nice and bright, night, day, anytime. And now let's go into the plumbing. So here is my faucet. Faucets are expensive, but this one was super cheap compared to other stainless steel sinks. It was 80 bucks for the faucet and the sink, which was an absolutely fantastic deal. And I have that wired in. So this switch right here turns on the water. You have running water in this van for about a week. So you may be asking yourself, hey Brian, why do you use a switch and not the faucet? Well, let me tell you. So I found that when I left this switch on all of the time and use the faucet handle to control the water. There was a lot of pressure building up in the system as the pump wouldn't cut off until higher PSIs. So I just decided to do it this way. You can do it however you want, but I like it, it works, and that's that. So that's the sink plumbing, the bathroom, that's right over here. And let's cover the fun stuff now. So I probably shouldn't show you this, but that's my safe. I bolted it to the bottom of the van. Nothing valuable is in there really, but if I have a passport or something, that's where I'll keep that. Over here, we got a fridge. It's super low power draw, so it'll run for days without using much power. Nothing is in it right now, unfortunately. So this is what keeps the van comfy. It's a five inch gel foam mattress. One inch of gel on top, four inches of foam on the bottom. Two awesome, awesome pillows. One very nice Costco blanket, $20, super soft. And that is Mama June. She watches over the van, makes sure it stays safe, keeps out any intruders. She's a panda. This is a gas one butane stove, it allows food to be made, water to be boiled, and things to be burnt. And it runs on butane. I believe I said that already. It's awesome. Next up is the backup camera. You gotta have a backup camera. Yeah, maybe you don't have to. I have to in order to not hit stuff. This thing has saved my life countless. It's never saved my life. It's, it's a very good thing to have. I recommend a backup camera. This thing right here is a light bar. Gets super bright during the nighttime in case you need to see farther in the distance. And this little thing controls the base, the subs, the woofers. These are my coins. They stay here for when I need them. All that stuff over there in the passenger seat is camera gear. Let's go around to the back to check out some of the more fun things. This is my tow hitch. Under here, a couple goodies. As you can see, that's where we keep the top spot. Right here, we got a hammock for hammocking, hanging. And this right here is awesome. It's a foldable bike. It's from a European company, Zizzo. And let me show you how it works. I wrote this song for all my no good friends who's just getting by. Just like me. Leaving the bar, my breath is hard, is regular gasoline. Fire up. So that's the video, my friends, my children, my babies. I get it, this video is kind of fast. Um, I might not have covered everything, so if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, other than that, this van was built as a video editing van, so its basic purpose is to be able to sleep in it, charge camera batteries, charge drone batteries, and keep my laptop charged so I can edit off of it on the go. Um, it accomplishes that goal perfectly with the 200 watts of solar on the roof, and everything other than that is just extra. So. It might not be the perfect van build for you. Maybe you want more space for outdoor gear. Maybe you want a bigger bed. Maybe you want more sinks, less sinks, uh, bigger subwoofers. That's all up to you. But I hope you got some tips or tricks from this van build. Maybe learned a thing or two. So enjoy. Thank you so much. Bye bye. where I was born. Good morning, music city.